First, we're gonna start with our Neely Signature Barbecue Ribs by marinating them in our secret dry rub. So Pat's gonna pull those ribs out. Give me the pork, because the pork is always a little sweeter than the beef. I'm sweet, you're not. And Pat's gonna do the beef, because he's the stud. So I am the stud. First thing we wanna do, honey, is we're gonna pull the membranes off, and we wanna just pull that skin off. Why do we pull the membrane off? Well, honey, you got your nails done. Why don't you let Daddy help you here? The membrane has a tendency to block the seasoning. So we're gonna pull these off, and we wanna season these ribs, and we want them to cook for about eight hours. While Pat is pulling off the membrane and preparing the ribs, I'm gonna make the barbecue rub, which is also the Neely seasoning, so you get that recipe. What you're gonna need is one and a half cups of paprika, then we're gonna need three-fourths cup of sugar, and we need three and three-fourths tablespoons of onion powder. This may seem like a lot of onion powder, but it blends in the right amount for the paprika to bring it to a nice balance. And I'm gonna start prepping the pork ribs on it. You know, in the South here in Memphis, we have what we call a St. Louis style rib. So we're gonna take this pork spare rib and we have to trim it. And I've trimmed the skirt off. Ooh. And now I'm going to trim the skirt. Okay. <laughs> and so if you leave this on, what happens is when you're cooking it, the top slab of the rib will come done and you'll have tough meat here. Can I let you taste a little yes, bit? Yes, I'd love to taste it. There you go. Mm. Good job. How is that? It's good. It's good. good. And once we smoke these ribs with the charcoal and the hickory, you're going to have one dynamite rib. So now we're ready for the dry rub, honey. Can I sprinkle it on there? You sprinkle it on. One of the reasons that we call it a dry rub, even though it's a barbecue grill seasoning, is because we actually want to rub it in so that the seasoning will actually penetrate the rib. Is this the barbecue king or what? Can I have some more, honey? Can, you give, me, can you give me some more? Give me some more. All right. Come with another one? Come with now, another one. Now, sprinkle some and tell me who you are. I am the spice fairy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we want to flip it over. We want to turn flip her. Flip it over. Rub it down. We want to turn her over, and we want to massage this into her. Are All we right? still talking about the meat? Because <laughs> I'm about to get on the table. <laughs> Now, sometimes if you like, you can add a little more sugar to make the dry rub sweeter. I'm a girl, I like sweeter, but most people don't, so we'll just leave the recipe as is for our friends that's coming over. And we're gonna put them in the refrigerator until it's time to grill. We like to have about two to three hours. The longer, the better. Sometimes I even do it the night before if I know we're gonna grill the next morning. We're gonna create some really good flavor before we put these ribs on. All right, big guy, how we coming? Oh, man, we coming up really good. We got the hickory going, the charcoal is fired up, the temperature is right. I say it's time to load these ribs. Well, let's make this happen. Tony, what do you think about this grill? I mean, this is a wonderful grill. I can remember when we were kids, you know we always had the charcoal up under here? Right. And you had to be out here all right. day long keeping the fire down. Well, now, because of your indirect heat, you don't have to deal with it anymore. Right. All your heat is coming from over here. This is our heat source. This is where everything starts. From there, the heat rises. It goes under the meat, and it comes out of our fluid. So and we're putting our pork ribs close to the heat source. We want to put our beef ribs on the far side of the grill with less heat. And we're under no threat at all, Patrick, of ever burning our meat or getting over scorched and, and being black on the outside and not done on the inside. We loaded the ribs curl side up because over time, in the next hour or two, these ribs will develop their own natural juices, a puddle. Now, when we get halfway through with cooking the ribs, we're going to turn them. But I've got a secret that once we get two thirds of the way cooking, I like to wrap the ribs in foil. Primarily because, Patrick, what it does is it creates its own natural juices to continue. And in that fall, it really makes everything tender. And that's my own personal secret. Now, I'll tell you what, we're going to be the star of, of this Sunday dinner, that's for sure. Here we go. Here we go. Whoa, here yes, we go. finally. Yes, yes. All righty. Wow, that looks good. Yeah. This way. I'll just grab you one. Oh, I'll take a little more. Save some for leftovers. How about that? You know, you just. Uh... <laughs> now, I'll have you guys know that I prepared all of this all by myself. Aww, I did, I did. And Gina made the tea. 